Hello friends, now we are going to discuss the next part of the ANS Pharmacology. We have uploaded first part. Now, the first one is that the drug which can decrease the function of both alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors. Okay, which is basically inhibiting both alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors. So, these are the phenoxo, phenoxybenzamine and phenotalamine. Friends, now we are going to discuss the second part of the ANS Pharmacology. So in this we will mainly discuss drug which will target the different types of adrenergic receptor. So these two drugs it is phenoxybenzamine and phenotelmine. Okay, these two drugs target both alpha 1, 1 and alpha 2 receptors. Okay, so they are alpha blockers phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine. One difference is between them is that phenoxybenzamine is your irreversible receptor blocker. Okay, that is it is undergoing non competitive blocker okay whereas phentolamine is your reversible receptor blocker okay higher concentration of norepinephrine can replace this blocking drug okay now one way is also to remove the effect of non competitive blocker that is destruction of old receptor and formation of new receptor in cell can remove the effect or effect of your non competitive blockers okay it's a, this is a normal physiological process old receptors are destructed and new receptors are formed that is no, known as turnover of receptors so turnover of receptors can remove the effects of your non competitive blockers clear now moving for the drugs which is targeting specifically some type of receptor that is these drugs this whole drug target alpha 1 okay they are alpha 1 blocker Prazosin, triazosin, doxazosin, alfuzosin, tamsulosin, okay, silodosin means you can remember this josin, sinsin, okay, they are all alpha 1 targeting drugs, clear. Now, one important point about prazosin that is the it is short, it is short effective that it is its effect is up to 6 to 8 hours, whereas triazosin long lasting effect up to 24 hours. The next is your beta adrenergic blocking drugs okay we have discussed alpha now the drugs which can block both beta 1 plus beta 2 that is non selective blocking agents okay this is also divided into two some drugs having without intrinsic sympathetomimetic activity they are propanolol sotalol and timolol and with intrinsic sympathomimetic activity is your pindolol okay these four drugs are non selective beta blockers okay now beta 1 selective beta blockers that only block beta 1 is your metoprolol etinolol acetbutolol seliprolol and nevibrolol okay see here all old containing generally all old containing drugs are coming for beta energic blocking drugs okay now moving for sympathomimetic drugs so sympathomimetic drugs is again divided into two types that is indirectly acting drugs and directly acting drugs okay what is the indirectly acting drugs so they work on sympathetic nerve ending to release more norepinephrine okay they don't don't bind directly to receptors of the norepinephrine clear they work on sympathetic nerve and they cause release of more nor norepinephrine they directly do not binding on the receptors the one example of indirectly acting drug is your amphetamines now directly acting drug so they act directly on receptors example is cell lutamol so first we will discuss about directly acting drug so the first is phenyl ephyrine okay this increases the activity of alpha 1 then clonidine okay it is central sympathro central sympathotolytic but it can also increase alpha 2 functions okay if alpha 2 will be stimulated release of norepinephrine will decrease this is important we are discussing about sympathomimetic drugs that is the drugs which is increasing the activity of the particular receptors okay so this clonidine can increases the activity of alpha 2 receptor but alpha 2 receptor is generally present on presynaptic membrane and if alpha 2 receptor will be activated then it will lead to reduce secretion of norepinephrine okay so indirectly it is this drug is decreasing the secretion of norepinephrine okay so it is known as six central sympatholytic drug okay it is increasing the activity of receptor but due to increase activity of receptor the secretion of norepinephrine will be decreased we will discuss more detail in later now 
non epinephrine fin drug that will increase alpha 1 beta 1 functions more and beta 2 very less epinephrine is active on all both okay alpha 1 beta 1 beta 2 they increase the activity of all the three whereas isoproteranol will increase only activity of beta 1 and beta 2 clear now coming to the dopamine very important okay this dopamine um, will increase the activity of d receptor and beta 1 receptor okay and it is given in patient with cardiac output decreased cardiac output plus chances of acute tubular necrosis clear so this dopamine will act on heart that is beta 1 receptor and increase cardiac output and it acts on d receptors on kidney that is dopamine receptor and causes your vasodilation clear so if there is vasodilation then more blood will reach there so it will reduce the chances of acute tubular necrosis and increased cardiac output will help okay now at high concentration dopamine can also stimulate alpha 1 receptors which is leading to the vasoconstriction so dopamine concentrations before giving patients should be well determined okay now the next one is increasing beta 1 activity we, you can give dobutamine and for increasing beta 2 activity you can give cell butamol okay now we will discuss about indirectly acting drug so the first is cocaine or and tricyclic antidepressant drug okay these drugs these two drugs so these two drugs generally inhibits reuptake of norepinephrine from synapse to synaptic nerve terminal as we have discussed okay that is after secretion of norepinephrine norepinephrine does it works on postsynaptic membrane this is postsynaptic membrane and after its action they it is reuptaken by the presynaptic membrane okay and these drugs cocaine and tricyclic antidepressant it will inhibit reuptake of norepinephrine from synapse to synaptic nerve terminal okay so that norepinephrine resides more time in synapse okay it will lead to more activity at its receptor if reuptake is not done then norepinephrine will reside here and this norepinephrine can work for more time on the receptors clear the next one is your pargylin and tenylikipromine okay it inhibits your intraneural destruction of neurotransmitter reuptake okay it will inhibit the intraneuronal destruction of neurotransmitter reuptake the this neurotransmitter norepinephrine is reuptake here and it can be destroyed by monoamine oxidase which is present on mitochondria okay so these two drugs that is pargylin and tranyl kipromine will inhibit the destruction of the norepinephrine the next one is amphetamines and tyramine okay this increases vesicular fusion with presynaptic membrane okay if vascular fusion with presynaptic membrane increase then norepinephrine secretion will be increased okay so these are the important indirectly acting drugs cocaine tricyclic antidepressant then pargylin and tranyl kipromine then amphetamines and tyramine okay now we will discuss about biological responses upon activation of sympathetic nervous system so tissues and organs which is which is needed to be stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system have alpha 1 adrenergic receptor and beta 1 adrenergic receptor whereas tissue and organ whose function is to be inhibited having alpha 2 adrenergic receptor and beta 2 okay alpha 2 beta 2 is having for inhibition and 1 1 is for stimulation clear now all the tissues to be stimulated have alpha 1 adrenergic receptor see here for stimulation either alpha 1 or beta 2 but generally in maximum cases there will be alpha 1 adrenergic receptor except your heart in will you will find beta 1 then go gd apparatus okay juxta glomerular apparatus and adipocytes these three have beta 1 receptor adipocytes had modified beta 1 receptor that is known as beta 3 receptors and all the other tissues which need to be stimulated have alpha 1 adrenergic receptors clear now all the tissues to be inhibited have beta 2 adrenergic receptor except presynaptic membrane okay your platelets insulin producing cells okay this three presynaptic membrane platelets and insulin producing cells have alpha 2 receptors okay as we have discussed presynaptic membrane has alpha 2 platelets and insulin producing cells also have alpha 2 receptors clear now we will discuss the action of sympathetic nervous system okay from upward to downward so first hair erection will occur due to stimulation of erector pili muscle okay and this is so there will be stimulation of erector pili muscle so the receptor which is found in erector pili muscle will be 
alpha 1 receptor because all the tissues which need to be stimulated have alpha 1 receptor except some clear people also get dilated when there is activation of sympathetic nervous system okay so these are the dilator pupillae muscle and these are the constrictor pupillae okay so dilator pupillae has to be stimulated because people is going to dilate so they will have alpha 1 receptor whereas constrictor pupillae which is needed to be inhibited during pupil dilation so they have beta 2 receptor beta 2 receptor as a general rule now lens become flattened due to action of ciliaries okay for far vision during stress we were discussing for far vision lens because for far vision lens has to be flattened so that rays coming from far will make image on the retina okay so lens will become flattened due to action of ciliaries so ciliaries and when when lens become flattened then ciliary muscle relaxes okay for making lens flattened ciliary muscle need to be relaxed okay so ciliary muscle does not need stimulation so ciliary muscle will have inhibiting receptor that is beta 2 receptors clear now the third will be GIT system so this is longitudinal muscle which is mainly responsible for peristalsis and these are the circular sphincter muscle which is okay they are the circular sphincter muscles and they are longitudinal muscle longitudinal muscle is mainly responsible for peristalsis and we know when sympathetic nervous system is activated we don't need peristalsis okay so these muscles should be inhibited during stress because all the activities which are coming under stress will be stimulated by your sympathetic nervous system and under stress we don't uh, need food to eat uh, and anything that like that okay so these muscles need to be inhibited so these will have receptor that is beta 2 receptor and circular sphincter muscle is stimulated during stress they have alpha 1 receptors okay now blood supply to GIT blood supply to GIT should be reduced during stress so the receptors on in smooth muscle of blood vessel will have alpha 1 receptors clear now moving to the next now coming to the lungs in a stress we need more oxygen so there should be bronchiodilation okay so for bronchiodilation smooth muscle in bronchi should be inhibited so smooth muscle in bronchi will have beta 2 type receptors we have discussed that is beta 2 is for inhibition and alpha 1 for stimulation now for heart to increase cardiac output we have to increase heart rate as well as a stroke volume okay so SA node, AV node, atrial and ventricular muscle all have beta 1 adrenergic receptors clear all have beta 1 adrenergic receptors now coming to the vascular system so at in the stress vasoconstriction will be occurring in skin GIT kidney okay whereas vasodilation will be seen in skeletal muscle because in a stress suppose a dog is pursuing you so you have to run from that dog okay so for running skeletal muscle needs more energy so skeletal muscle must be supplied with more amount of blood okay so there will be vasodilation in a skeletal muscle it means a skeletal muscle it means muscle present in the blood vessels which is supplying a skeletal muscle must have beta 2 receptor because this is this smooth muscles need to be inhibited whereas skin git and kidney must have alpha 1 receptor because here vasoconstriction is needed during stress clear coronary and cerebral blood vessels are not affected much by sympathetic fluctuations okay this is one of the more important point now coronary blood vessels have a high concentration have about same concentration sorry same concentration of alpha 1 and beta 2 receptors okay so sympathetic fluctuation does not affect your coronary blood flow clear okay and coronary blood vessels is mainly affected by your metabolites clear cerebral blood vessels have no significant concentration of energetic receptors it is regulated by metabol metabolites mainly clear so these are the important points about coronary blood vessels and cerebral blood vessels now coming for the metabolic activities okay so the hepatocyte hepatocyte have beta 2 receptors okay and upon stimulation in stress we need more and more glucose in our blood okay so glycogenolysis must be promoted okay here glycogenolysis must be promoted and glycogenesis must be inhibited because during a stretch we need more and more glucose in the blood okay so glycogenolysis will be stimulated and glucose will start coming in your blood gluconeogenesis will also occur to increase increase level of glucose in your blood for gluconeogenesis you need free fatty acid so lipolysis in adipocyte cell will also increase so free fatty acid will reach here and free fatty acid will go to liver and undergo gluconeogenesis to form more glucose so 
this have beta 2 receptors okay and this adipocyte have beta 3 receptor this is modified beta 1 receptor as we have discussed earlier clear okay so these are the metabolic changes which are occurring at your liver now a skeletal muscles need glucose so glycogenolysis should be promoted also there so a skeletal muscle also have beta 2 adrenergic receptors clear during sympathetic stimulation beta 2 receptors present or muscle spindle also get stimulated and if beta 2 receptor is getting stimulated here see beta 2 receptor is getting stimulated so glycogenesis is inhibited beta 2 receptor is stimulated so glycogenesis is inhibited and glycogenolysis is promoted clear here same a beta 2 receptor will get stimulated then it will inhibit the activity of muscle spindle okay and if there will be inhibition of activity of muscle spindle that will can that can cause tremors clear now the last part that your uterus effect of sympathetic receptors on uterus so in myometrium smooth muscle during pregnancy there will be more expression of beta 2 receptors okay so that uterus don't contract okay because during pregnancy we don't want any contraction in the smooth muscle okay when female is not pregnant more expression of alpha 1 receptors for making fertilization proper okay when female is not not pregnant there will be more alpha 1 receptor that will be leading to more contraction so that it can help in fertilization but when pregnant there will be no need of contraction expression of receptors are tightly regulated by hormone levels during premature onset of labor we can give beta 2 agonist okay because beta 2 agonist will decrease the muscular contraction so there will be less chances of propulsion of baby okay fetus so that uterus contraction can be delayed clear now coming to the urinary bladder this is the detrusor muscle shown okay and this is your internal sphincter and during stress we do not want to urinate okay so detrusor muscle need to be relaxed okay it does not need to be contract because it will be if it will be stimulated then it will lead to contraction of the urinary bladder okay which will lead to passing of urine but we do not want to urinate so the detrusor muscle must be relaxed so it will have beta 2 receptor and internal sphincter must be stimulated so that it can contract and do not allow urine to pass out so it will have alpha 1 and in this okay so this is all about okay